What's poppin' everybody? This is the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins, and we're continuing a 25 Days of Christmas Cartoons marathon with Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Special one, Jingle Jingle Jangle. Now, we're revisiting this series from the 31 Days of Halloween Cartoons marathon, and I wasn't a huge fan of it, but this episode, I'm kind of finding it a little better, just to give you guys a little spoiler before we get into the, our little review. But if you guys don't know what this episode is about, we're going to have Mr. Alex Payne here to give you guys the episode breakdown. So what happened in this episode? Well, this episode, it follows kind of a really simple concept. You know, the cul sack is getting ready for Christmas. You know, it's snowing and everything. And Eddie goes like every like let's be real like, like most kids do you know once parents leave home mm-hmm. they start digging around for them gifts i definitely so, did that <laughs> so he went and he found a stash of the gifts and he was very unhappy with what he found so basically he went around the neighborhood trying to mooch off of other people's christmas and um ed and double d are trying to like stop him and in in basically give him you know instill some decency in him pretty much and, it, and, <laughs> and there's a little subplot of the three canker sisters traveling and following the light like the three wise men so yeah that's the plot of the episode listen my first impressions obviously when i seen um eddie up in there looking at the christmas gifts he opened up he saw he got clothes and he's like man i don't like clothes listen <laughs> I used to kind of be that way because I, I, I mean, I always got everything I wanted. I got some clothes and I mean, I didn't hate them. Obviously, you know, I was a grateful kid. I was like, oh, cool. I got clothes. But then they're like, eh, I mean, cool. You know, I already got a lot of clothes. I mean, you just wasted your money. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was always name brand clothing. So um, I always happy with what I got, though. But <laughs> I kind of <laughs> empathize with the man. No, I don't think he should have been going all crazy trying to mooch off other people's Christmas. I think he need to get his butt beat for that. Um, and we gotta thank Jack Frost for nipping his nose. <laughs> so, I gotta say, man, Ed's an ungrateful motherfucker. And he pretty much kind of was till the end, to be honest. <laughs> but that's my first impression. What about yours? My first impression was, I don't, um, this, the episode, my, I think my first impression was the episode was very colorful and the music and I'm, I'm still alive from the courage cowardly dog reviews but the music was very good in the episode i feel like huh okay okay i mean it wasn't okay. nothing you know too super grand or nothing but it had like the nice it actually no you know what my real f- first impression is of this episode even though it isn't a first impression in a way because it's in a lot of the episodes but i just okay. like to notice it is ed and Nettie has this thing where like they just add the, like these weird sound effects to everything. Like I'm yeah, sure, right? <laughs> yeah. like, I I love those just random ass weird sound effects. Like when like for example, when Eddie stole all the friggin' gifts at the end and um Double D said some super elaborate shit to Ed and you just hear like a spring pop while he as he tried to understand what he just said. And it's just like <laughs> Just those random weird little sounds that I love. I love about the show in general. So I guess that's my first impression. I noticed yeah, that, a lot of that that's, little things. A lot of people always point that out, man. That's the stable of the show. I've never seen it. Obviously, the Halloween episode was the first one that I seen. But everybody talks about how Ed and Eddie has these weird ass sound effects. I can't tell you how many times I came across a video on YouTube of like maybe a Dragon Ball Z fight or whatever with Ed, Ed, and Eddie sound effects. That shit sounds like the weirdest shit ever, but it has me rolling. Um, but let's get on to the moments of the episode. What are some of your favorite moments? Actually, you know what? I'll mention one of mine's first, because mm-hmm. um, this is on the top of my head. Obviously, I mentioned earlier the whole uh, instance where Eddie ran into Jack Frost and yeah. just kept, quote unquote, nipping his nose, trying to bite that motherfucker off. And listen, <laughs> Jack Frost wasn't playing. He said, man, Snowflake found you out, man. He knows you're just a mooch trying to steal all our presents. They got his ass up out of there. <laughs> um, my second moment, obviously, when everything was over and the Kanga sisters and shit, they were like, oh, yeah, um, we're going to give you a kiss and not on the cheek either. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Listen, they were getting raped. 
<laughs> no, yeah, because you saw them all running the house. You just hear them all screaming. Eddie obviously is the loudest one. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, come on, man. How you how you gonna how you gonna do that the the ad that and Eddie like that, man? Come on. You know. Um, go ahead. You know, it's funny because, and this really should have been my first impression. Now that I think about it, but um, I don't care what no one says. I feel like Ed has the best one-liners in any cartoon. Like, just the... Just Is that, everything. That's a super dumb one, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, like um, cause, and this goes back to my moment when Double D first came over or whatever, and he gave him the gift, and Ed went to go hug him. And, he, yeah. and, and then he had that inner monologue. He's like, okay, okay, Double D, just calm down, calm down. Try to, not, try to ignore his smell. Try to ignore his smell. Oh, man. <laughs> But then, like when he was when he was trying to say, "Oh, you know, tis the season, tis." I'm trying to show you about love, love. And then he puts his hand on his heart. It comes from here. Why are you touching my udder? My uh, yeah, that was my favorite line. Of the- <laughs> touching my udder, stupid ass. And and another um, one say say this um this this um what I think yeah this angel has one more trick of his robe. I, pro- I promise not to peek, Double D. <laughs> and just a whole bunch of other... Sh- one of my other favorites is when, like, Santa Claus dropped the, the bag of gifts. Yeah. And he was flying away, and you hear Ed running. Santa, Sa- you, you Santa, me, Ed, we good. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, man. <laughs> Listen. You can't deny them the fact that motherfucking and I this kind of goes into the reviewing portion of the video. But I have to mention it when this motherfucker put uh put a new light bulb on a tree and shit, right? Um, mm-hmm. Eddie, and talking about oh yeah, you know you finally did something good, you finally did something good, and then I uh that's when Santa popped up and shit, and then you know gifts started showing up. This dude just basically took all the motherfucking gifts. Like damn, didn't that just defeat the whole purpose? <laughs> Yeah, just it's just just had an instant switch. Man, but you know, I guess you could expect that from Ed and Eddie. You, I know a little bit about them to know that you know, obviously they're gonna deviate from the normal feel of cartoons. Um, do you have any more moments before we get into the final review? Um, I think I think I covered um, I think I covered them all for the most part. I believe so. Okay, well. Give us your final review for this episode. What do you think? I think this episode is really enjoyable. I like the whole... I like the, like... I guess the mood shifts that it has in it. Like, yeah, I, okay. Like the, the mood, like, especially the one after Eddie got kicked out of the la- last house. Oh, uh-huh. I forgot. I guess I could throw this in at the very last moment before I move on. Is when he went to Ralph's house and he was dancing around in the sheet, oh, in yeah. the sheet uniform, singing about I that fucking, woman. I hate that German, um, that German fucking me. I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying. <laughs> I and I'm like, what are you saying to me? <laughs> Go ahead. But um, but yeah, so that that's um one of my moments. But um, I like the mood switch of when he went to the like when Eddie was to the last after he left the last house, which I really was want to say was Kevin when he gave him the the gift that punched him in the um air i think so yeah sent his ass flying but i i just like um the mood shift from that to when he was like walking towards the tree and doing all that like it's just like an immediate mood shift like it even kind of made you feel bad for that even though you kind of shouldn't at all i never feel bad for his ass (laughs) (laughs) but so i like the mood shifts i feel like it had a lot of i just feel like it was a really good special in general and I guess it, okay. it it was showing a lot of like how some kids can be selfish as hell. Oh yeah, like I said, and that's why I wanted to bring up my first impression. Like when I got clothes, obviously I wasn't like a huge fan of them because, like I said, I had I always had a lot of clothes, man. Um, but like, and also like I'm the firm believer, like if you don't know what you're gonna get somebody, get them money, um, because that's mm. always gonna be the best gift. Like for me, I always appreciate what I got. Clothes were cool too, but like you know, I me personally, I prefer to have something else. I got a lot of clothes. Oh, you know, I always had a lot of clothes, so I kind of saw what he's talking about there. But it's just like, man, you know, you got to be grateful for what you got because some kids out there don't got like, some kids don't even have fresh, clean clothes. You know, 
And that's mm-hmm. why I'm like, okay, you know, I, I see what they're trying to do here. But it, it, it's kind of fucked up. This ungrateful motherfucker. <laughs> He's trying to steal other people's gifts, man. But um, go ahead. Finish off with your rating. Um, I think I'm going to have to give this one a nice – I think I'm going to have to give it a nice solid – I'm debating between a 7.5 and an 8 because I think overall it was a really good holiday themed episode without oh, yeah. it feeling. Because, see, my main thing is, and we got, and, and we're going to get into this with some other Christmas reviews, I'm sure. Like, some of, some, it's, it's very easy to make a Christmas episode be cheesy as hell. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, hell yeah. It's very easy for it to be make it feel cheesy as hell and everything, but um, I feel like this Christmas episode didn't it was it nothing about it felt really cheesy to me, and it didn't really okay. feel feel like forced in that way of like some like it it felt like Christmas was a season that was happening instead of like a forced focal point of the episode. If that right. makes any sense, like no, it didn't I feel see, a need to jam in Santa. They didn't feel the need to jam in Santa. They didn't need to feel feel the need to do this, that, or that. I mean, yeah, you could argue double D's, you know, telling them get the Christmas spirit and all that other shit. But that was just a reaction to Eddie's trying to steal people's gifts and shit. Right, right. So yeah, um, I think I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it an eight because I think it was just a really good, Ooh. enjoyable episode. Had some good comedy, and I feel like they didn't force the Christmas in there. It felt like it felt like a real Christmas. If that makes okay. any sense. Instead of just like, a, we're going to try and make it as Christmassy as possible. You know what? I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Because I was thinking the same thing. Like, the Christmas, you know, it wasn't like... It, and the main thing I was comparing this to is, um, I guess you could say Futurama. Because it kind of, it, it was a little bit... Cr- they had Santa as like a villain there. But it, also in that episode of Futurama, it didn't feel like it was... um a super Christmassy story in a sense, mm-hmm. if, you, if you know what I mean. It wasn't like no, exactly the run of the mill Christmas story. It was something different. Whereas mm-hmm. the Simpsons, you know, it was like a poor family trying to, you know, do Christmas the right way, you know, and Homer's trying to save every, uh, save the family's Christmas, which obviously is a storyline definitely probably used over and over and over and over and over again. So, um, when I saw, like I said, Ed, uh, Eddie, you know, going through all the gifts and whatnot, and he was talking about how he didn't, how he wanted a different family. I thought they were gonna do the whole thing where, you know, the um, what the fuck is that called? The guardian angel comes and you know switches his life with somebody else's, and you know he sees that his life is worse, <laughs> and he wants his original family back. That's exactly what I fucking thought was gonna happen. I should, I should have mentioned this in the, in the moments, but that's a good, that's a good point because they did, they did that joke where like. They brought Double D down, and he was dressed up as an angel, and then yep. while he was giving this fake speech, Eddie just freaking yep. slammed him in the face with a snowball. Yeah, and, and I gotta say, that's the main thing. That's, that's what gave that episode major points for me. I'm like, whoo, thank God we're not doing that. <laughs> this is not going through this, okay? I, I honestly hate, I mean, if I don't identify with the characters like that, and, and like I said, I've only seen one other episode of this, so I don't know the characters like that like that. I wouldn't have enjoyed this that much. So, um, with all that being said, I'm glad that they went down the plot line that they did with this episode. Like you said, comedy was good. Music was damn good. Um, and listen, you got to enjoy the motherfucking greedy ass kid, you know, <laughs> who doesn't really get his say in the end. And <laughs> you got to enjoy that switch up at the end. And he got, you know, Eddie got everything he deserved. He got motherfucking practically face raped by the Kanga sisters. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to give this one a good, I'm going to hit it with a nice seven out of 10, seven out of 10. I'm going seven out of 10. Um, like, you know, I feel like I would enjoy the episode a lot more if I watch more of the series, obviously, but mm-hmm. you know what? Fuck it. I bump it up to a 7.5. I'm going to go classic Ray raw and 7.5. So I, I feel like that does it more justice, you know, like, yeah. Simply because I don't know the characters like that, I'm not gonna, you know, nitpick with the rating on the episode. It was a very, uh, very well enjoyable episode. And like I said, the whole idea of not going down that guardian angel fucking plot line <laughs> really made me a happy man. So, with all that being said, man, my name is Ray Rollins. I give Ed Ed Nettie special one jingle jingle jangle a 7.5 out of 10. His name is Alex Payne, and he gave this episode an 8 out of 10. Subscribe for more 25 days of Christmas cartoon content. 
to the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily, baby. Cartoon, cartoon, cartoon. Y'all know how we do over here, man. But with all that being said, we will see you when we see you. Goodbye. <laughs>